Today, I'm going to take you through a demo of ArcGIS Urban and cover some of the new features in the recent release. The demo today is located in Honolulu. First, I'll take you through a new plan type called Land Use Plans. Then, we will review some enhancements to zoning plans. And finally, I'll cover the new sketching capabilities for projects in ArcGIS Urban. Here we are in Honolulu. Many of you might already be aware of their ambitious commuter rail corridor and the corresponding TOD plan areas. These plans are not realized overnight, so we're working with the city to stand up ArcGIS Urban to help facilitate the development of these individual plan areas. Let's get started with the demo. With the latest enhancement to Urban's data model, we now have the added content filter that can be used together with the user's login to determine what you see in the list on the left or directly in the map itself. You can further filter by just your own content, content shared across the organization, or public content. And with the recent release, we've added land use plans, useful for a general plan update. This is in addition to the zoning plans, which are shown in orange here, used for TODs or smaller corridor plans. In this first example, this is a land use plan, a future land use plan for the entire island of Honolulu, using our new conceptual grid. Land use is defined in urban as a percent distribution of space use types, shown here as hotel, retail, office. These land use types are represented as colors in the scenario shown here. We've also added an easy to use paint tool for applying new land use types within a scenario. In this case, we can add a general commercial around the light rail stops. And we can add some medium density residential further around that. These land uses are defined by FAR in the case of commercial or office space, and for residential, dwelling units per acre is used to denote density, medium density residential being 15 units per acre, and single family residential being five units per acre. Let's zoom in and take a close look at an individual TOD plan. In this case, the East Capoli plan, around these three light rail stations. In Urban, we can choose to edit the plan. This will bring up additional functionality for authoring scenarios. Urban uses a copy from the existing conditions as a starting point for any plan. In Honolulu, we have a very simple definition of existing land uses. That's why you only see urban and agricultural listed here. This is also a very large unbuilt greenfield site. In Urban, what we can do is actually look at these selected parcels and also validate against other uses uh, that might be within zoning districts that exist within that plan area. But in this example, what I'm going to do is create a brand new scenario, and I'm going to walk through how to create a conceptual scenario and split up some of these very large parcels. New scenarios can be based off existing ones, and the ownership corresponds to your username. So unless you share the plan with a colleague or have a scenario unlocked, they won't be able to edit your work. So now what I'm going to do is select these three parcels and show you how to create a conceptual grid. Here in the toolbar, there's a few options to merge, split, erase, and make a new grid. It's a new option that will automatically slice up the large parcels so I can generate some conceptual scenarios. The new grid will be stored as conceptual parcels in the scenario that you have active. Under the land use tab, we've added that new paint tool. Painting land use is quite well known as a concept in the industry today. This lets you choose from a palette of land use types. In this case, you can see future land use types, which can be further templatized for your particular city or county, reflective of typical development patterns. So here in these examples, you're seeing a couple of commercial cores combined together with a mixed use in between. So when painting, you're actually creating a district underneath. Here in these scenarios, you can already see some alternatives that I went ahead and created. We've added a few new land use types to our US default template, which you can see here, further defined as hotel, office, parking, and each one of these space use types has coefficients already built in that you can leverage. So each of these scenarios in this particular plan are targeting commercial cores around these three transit stations. Each plan can also have context brought in for additional levels of detail. 
in this case showing distance from station areas. So now let me go back to the overview and I'll take you to a different plan area. In the next example we'll look at the IAEA Pearl City specific plan. A zoning plan is similar to a land use plan. We can go ahead and open up that plan and choose to edit it. In this plan area, we can take a look at the zoning capabilities of urban and how it may support a more targeted approach to implementing zoning changes and realizing an entire transit village. Similar to the other plan area, there is a transit station and the corresponding special district noted in the quarter and half mile buffers around that station. And as a common exercise, planners like to take a look at how existing zoning can be changed to accommodate a future build out scenario. So urban allows us to run scenarios based off the existing zoning. If all development were to occur, what proposed zone changes might actually look like. If I go ahead and switch scenarios here, you can see the existing zoning. And while existing conditions is locked, we can use that as a basis to build from in another scenario. So in this case, I'm going to select a zone here, BMX4. We can go ahead and open that up and modify it by clicking the Modify button. This actually opens up an entire list of available zones, both existing and proposed zones. Each zone in the plan area will have more detailed parameters outlining the FAR, allowed space use types, maximum building height. We're continuing to add new parameters, and our early customers are heavily influencing these. We've just recently added sky planes, which I'll demonstrate shortly. From this existing zone, we can also make a copy and propose changes. In this case, we'll make the new zone and we'll name it after the plan area itself. And we'll add a label. And for this example, what we'll do is just boost FAR from four to five FAR. We can save the work and then access that new zone directly in that list of all available zones and apply it within our scene. This new zone will affect all the parcels that it touches and they'll update according to that new parameter. In addition to modeling new zone types and land use types, Urban can model out building types. The building types respond to the underlying parameters automatically. In this case, you can see the new regulation of five being applied to this particular building. Building types are defined as a mix of space use types, one or many. Therefore, we can validate across zoning and land use plans based on the space use. And these space uses are defined and drive downstream capacity metrics, which are related to population, parking, trips, emission, energy use, and you can download these to Excel. I'll go ahead and download the entire study area here so we can open it up and take a look. In the Excel doc, it will actually download directly into your browser and you can open that up and in this case, enable editing. Each scenario is noted by the columns here. Each column represents the full build out of that particular scenario and all the capacity metrics are listed according to them. We also have a breakdown of all the space use types, as well as the space per zone applied in each scenario as well. Many scenarios are not only form-based, but can be run by testing different space use variations. In urban, you can create and manage your own space use types. So in this case, let's create a new space use type in this plan, and we'll call it let's say a brewery. And give it a pretty high ceiling, I would say. On the back end of the space use type, we can assign coefficients related to parking, number of jobs, and further use or not use all of these coefficients. Now what we can do is use that space use type within a building type by first selecting a site, in this case, Already, it's a Main Street retail building, so we're adding a bit more detail by adding a brewery. Let's go ahead and create a brand new building type. We got to name our building type, so we'll call it a simple brewery. And we can add space use components to our building, in this case, selecting our new space use type. We can choose the footprint shape, and this allows us to actually assign whether or not it's an auto generated footprint or rectangular footprint for further alignment characteristics. 
And when you're all finished, this new building type will be available across the plan area to others that might be working as well. And it can be applied to the parcel, just like so. So as mentioned, one of the key enhancements to zoning plans has been the addition of sky planes. In this example, let's override the allowable height of this parcel here, moving it from 60 foot maximum height to around 400 foot. We can turn on the zoning envelopes and visualize that buildable volume, which the sky plane will carve away at. Sky planes can be applied based on a parcel edge. Here we can choose the front street edge and set a vertical offset of 50 with a departure angle of 75 degrees. And to illustrate this further, rather than just show the building envelope, let's add a residential tower. The building type will react by offsetting itself to build as high as possible. And if we adjust the sky plane, the building will readjust as well to account for that. The residential tower is aligned to be as close to the street edge as possible. So no matter how I change the, the angle of departure, that building will always try and creep forward. In addition to the scenario planning tools, Urban has some out of the box spatial analysis tools, which include shadow, measurement, and slice. And we've just added a brand new one, line of sight. So similar to many beach towns, neighbors on hills don't like their views of the water blocked. So line of sight can be useful to simulate an observer location and then enable you to draw sight lines that can be added at various places throughout the scenario. So in this case, you can see the new high-rise towers are not really blocking the view. The existing high-rise towers had originally already blocked it. We've also added street level imagery through an integration with Mapillary allowing you to see side-by-side -side comparison with existing conditions on the right and the proposed conditions or the urban model on the left. When ready, these scenarios can be published from your plan and shared internally or with the public. When you're ready to publish, you hit the publish button. That brings up a dialogue from where you choose which layers you'd like to publish and the scenarios that you'd like to appear. By navigating back to the overview, here you can see the full build-out scenario that I had just published for sharing. We've added the ability to share plans not only internally, but also with the public, per scenario. So we've added under configuration a sharing tab that lets the owner of the plan copy that plan to the public view. In addition, we've added the ability to set a public comment period directly on the plan or project. This would be enabled for a designated time period. And once activated, users or viewers who are just viewing the plan can make categorized comments per scenario. And these comment categories can be set up ahead of time. This feedback layer is using the hub annotation layer for seamless management on the back end through ArcGIS Hub. And these comments are threaded together so that you can also download them later on for analysis. Now moving on to enhancements to projects in urban. Again, projects in urban are related to building permits. And like many cities, Honolulu is starting to visualize projects in context using 3D submissions. In this case, a Revit model for this apartment building. And comments can be turned on for projects as well. We've recently added a very simple project editing capability. For this example, I will go ahead and create a brand new project. And let's choose a spot over here in this field. I'll go ahead and designate the area of the project and I'm going to just call it sketch for this example. So you can imagine before just having a cocktail napkin to make some sketches, now we actually have the ability to sketch directly in context. Here we see the initial editing capability. We can sketch new buildings. In this case, let's sketch a 50 foot tall building and you're sketching it freehand with the ability to position or push pull each individual face of that building. We can sketch a brand new tower as well. So in this case, the tower itself can be moved independently of the podium that you had just sketched. 
and each individual face can be pulled and positioned both in the XY but also Z direction. We also have an extensive model library of trees. Each individual asset can be sized and positioned independent of each other. And in this case, we also have a full model library of different assets like vehicles. Let's go ahead and place a dump truck for scale. And we also have street furniture. Street furniture can be things such as the garbage bins, but also more complex models like the bus stop. And just like the tree models, the bus stop can be positioned and scaled uh, according to that particular project. Projects are also utilizing scenarios in the same method the plans are and allow you to share them the same way as well. So any edits made to a project will actually be shown in the overview. So if I go back in and edit this particular project building, make the podium a bit wider, my edits are saved automatically. And if I go back to the overview, those edits are reflected. That's where I'll leave it today. We're excited to continue working with the city and county of Honolulu to realize each of their TOD plans. Thank you for watching and please reach out if you have any questions regarding the demo or some of the capabilities shown in today's demo.